13. Mm. Job chapter 1, verse 13. I don't know, I don't know. But he knows, he knows. Stop. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to just believe God. Whatever God done told you. Just say, Lord, I believe you today. Somebody here in the building, God been talking with you. God been pleading with you. God been wanting to deliver you. And you just got so many distractions. And you got so much doubt in you. And one of your problems is you're too busy looking at other folks. And you, you need to look at the Lord. Amen. Because the folks are distracting. Amen. But God is silent. He's sound. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Everybody there? And there was a day. Mm. Strange how one day can seem like the other day, but then all of a sudden, it changes. When the sons and his daughters was eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house, there came a message unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the asses was feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain thy servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet talking, yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and has burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped, escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, came also another and said, The Chaldean made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. That's three folks left. All these servants get killed off. Got three servants left. Why he was yet talking? There came another. And then the mother three wasn't enough. Come another, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine with their elder brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to dare to tell thee. And the last verse says, Then Job rose, ran his mantle, shaved his head, fell down to the ground, and worshipped. I got to keep going. Y'all know I can't. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sent not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Neighbor, neighbor what, do you do what do you do when life, when life goes bad? Goes bad. <laughs> what do you do when life goes bad. Look at the neighbor and say it went bad. <laughs> went bad quick, didn't it? I was good. I was all right. Had my health and strength. Children were doing fine. Marriage was running along smooth. Me and my boyfriend was headed to the altar. But it went bad. I had the job, I had the promotion, amen. The bank had told me I had the loan, I could buy the house, I could get the car, but it went bad. Everybody has an experience, even young folks, steady hard, knew the material, but when it came time to take the test, went bad. I'll tell you that it went bad. It went bad. Everybody will have an experience of something going bad in your life. But the question then is, 
set before us today is what do you do when life goes bad? Everybody in here know the story of Job, how he was the richest man that lived in the land of Nun, how he was an upright and righteous man. He was a man that God bragged on. Yes, sir. Uh, Every time I read this story, it began to perplex me. It began to bother me because there's a question that comes up in my spirit. Can God brag on me? Y'all yeah. ask your neighbor that. I wonder can God brag on me? I wonder, wonder can God point me out to the devil and say, look at them. Nobody like them in the whole world. A man that loves God. A man that has faith and resists this evil. Do y'all ever wonder that? Do you ever? I wonder that sometimes can God recommend me? Can God speak highly of my character? Can God speak highly of my fortitude? Because it is your character, it is your fortitude that is revealed when things go bad. See, see, young folks, when you're looking for a wife or looking for a husband, you don't want a fair weather person. You need somebody that'll stick with you when things go bad. Can I help y'all out, young folks? If the brother don't stick with you when you're dating, y'all know how it is. If he don't run out every now and then when you're dating, what you think he's going to do when you're mad? Y'all don't like me. Y'all ain't going to be able to take me so, so y'all won't be hurt too bad. Things go bad. Don't they go bad? You got married. You love one another. Couldn't get another one another. The time went on. Things took a turn for the bad. Y'all don't know. And I don't care who in here married. You know, some of y'all are good at putting on the proverbial fake face. You know, like your marriage don't have no bumps in it. No curves and no groove. But everybody that married can testify that there's some time that things have. Do I have a witness here? And it was your faith, it was your fortitude in what you had promised God. You hung on in there. Look at your name and say, hang on in there, hang on in there. Hang on in there. I know it's rough. Because somebody saying, what do you do? What do you do? Well, we ain't got it no more. It's just bad. What do you do? <laughs> Hang on in there. <laughs> Job had a good life. If God bragged on him, Satan began to point out how good God had been to him. Satan began to point out, say, you blessed everything. Everything he touched, everything he possessed, you protects it. Right. You ain't never let nothing bad happen to him. Right. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 And I want to tell you, young folk, amen, you need to live right. Y'all look like more. I should have got more than one clap. Live right. Live the best you can because there's a time in life when things will go bad. And if you've been living right, if you've been close with the Lord, when things go bad, you ain't got to run and find it. Woo! If you've been walking close with the Lord, when things go bad, all you got to do is say, I need you. I need thee. And he's right there. Anybody know he's right there? He's not far away from helping us. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find help in the time of trouble. That's in Hebrew. What do you do when things go bad? What do you do when all of a sudden your body revoked against you? Heart won't act right. Lungs won't breathe right. Kidneys won't do right. I'm to say amen. amen. Bowels won't move right. Eyes won't see right. Hair won't grow right. Legs won't walk right. Feet hurt all the time. Hands hurt all the time. What do you do? And all of a sudden, you was young and now you're old. You can't even run no more. You can't even get out of bed hardly. What do? What do you 
do when life turns bad. Don't fool yourself. It can turn bad for you. Don't fool yourself. Don't think you are above. They ain't turning bad. Can anybody wave your hand and say you don't have some turn bads in your life? Matter of fact, it can turn bad two or three times. I, I've been down and I've gotten up and smoothed out in them. Next I know, another bad time. Sometimes I be wondering if I ever gonna get out these bad turns. Job began, the Bible said there was a day. Just another day that the Lord has blessed me. But it turned bad. Three different servants came bringing him reports of his financial demise. Are y'all listening to me? But the fourth fellow had the worst report because he brought a report of his personal demise. Your children, all ten of them, are dead. Now, I, I don't remember exactly how many servants he had but I know how much he got when this is over. Four of them. Cause he said, that each one of them said, I'm the only one. A household that used to have 30, 40, 50 servants running it. All of a sudden you got four. Hmm. Ain't got no money, can't pay on no house. Now your children dead. Watch this. You ain't got no money. And you got 10 funerals. You got 10 bodies. And I'm going to take it standing there like, well, let's see what kind of deal we can make. Can I help y'all out for a minute? Can I take my time for a fight? Y'all know how it is when somebody dies. You know, we all emotional about it, but the fact of the matter is the money got to come somewhere. Can you hear what I'm saying? Well, Joe, I know you. You all right. You can handle it, can't you? Yes, sir. Can you hear Joel saying, well, this morning I could have. <laughs> anybody, anybody done started out with a good morning, ended up with a bad night. Anybody started out, it seemed like it was a good day. Sun was shining, bird was singing, but somewhere along the line. Can't you hear Joel telling the owner taker, I need ten caskets. I need ten holes dug in the ground. And I was rich this morning. But I'm broke right now. What do you do? What do you do? Worst, the worst feeling to me, from a personal standpoint, worst feeling in the world is to have a bill that you know you really got to pay it. You just ain't got it. It's just, you know, you know, you don't call everybody. Everybody just broke you. At least they say they. At least. They what do you do? Huh? I know why y'all cry. Y'all didn't want me to. I'm holding on your road today. I'm holding on. It. Come to church, the man of God said, I got a feeling everything gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. <laughs> but you can't stay here. You can't. You can't stay here. You gotta go back to where things are bad. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish we could stay here. I really wish. I, I, I preach every day if y'all want to stay here. But the fact that we can't, we can't stay here. Gotta go back to where things went bad. But Job gives us something very important in the way he reacted to his demise. The Bible say he rented clothes at his mouth, shaved his head. Now, I want to submit to you, he was not having a mental breakdown. You know, uh, there have been some famous folk uh, in the news, some women 
when they go through trials and tribulations, they cut all they have off. That's not what Job was doing. Job was actually doing a worship. He was, he was consecrating himself. And he worshiped. The Bible says he worshiped. Look at your name and say worship, worship. Worship God. When things go bad in your life, that's not the time not to come to church. You know, I know it's wrong. You so worried about somebody saying something about your marriage going bad or your business going bad or they heard about you was in the joint and you so worried about what they going to say that you forget that your worship will deliver you. Oh, they with me here. You, I don't care what done happened in your life. I don't care if your name is in the newspaper. Amen. Come on to church and praise God in the house. I had some folks in here. I don't care who knows what happened in your marriage, who happened with your children. Come on to the Lord's house and give God a praise in the house. Joe worshiped the Lord. With four sermons broke, with ten funerals he couldn't pay. He said, Lord, I thank you, sir. Y'all don't see it, y'all don't see it. He said, thank you. How you know he said thank you? He said, Lord, you gave it. Thank you for the gift. Yes, sir. You took it away. Thank you for that, too. Because you really can't appreciate some things until they work. Well. Go on. I didn't mean to take this much time today. The reason why sometimes God allows you to lose things because you didn't know how to act when you had it anyway. Some of y'all had got a little sedated. Some of y'all had got a little pompous. Head had got a little swollen. Y'all don't have to say nothing. So God allow a bad turn. You wouldn't let folk ride in your little car. Had to take the shoes off when they come in your house. So God just allow bad turn. Now you ain't got no house. Bad turn, bad turn. Joe washed. Can I tell you the second thing he did? Joe, he hanged in there. He hanged on there. He hanged in there. Even his wife got frustrated with how he was hanging in there. Because she said, How long will you hold your integrity? Why don't you, why don't you give up? Why don't you give in? Why don't you throw in the towel? Why don't you? Curse God and die. How long? Will you hold your integrity? I looked at the word integrity. Y'all ain't with me. Say, I looked at the Let me make sure I say it right. Y'all know I don't really keep notes from the. I want to make sure I quote it to you right. Even though I memorize, right, I want to quote it to you right. It says, strict compliance to an ethical standard. Integrity. How long are you going to keep following God? How long are you going to keep paying your time and some of your bills can't get paid? How long? Are you going to keep helping other folks that we need help ourselves? How long? Are you going to keep loving folks that hate you and mistreat you and do bad about you but you still treat them? How long? Will you maintain strict compliance to an ethical standard? There's a B part to it I like even better. It says the state of being whole or sound. Mm. What do you do when things go bad? You got to remain sound. You got to remain whole. Look at your name and say, don't fall apart on me. Don't fall apart on me. Can I talk to the men and the young men see? You know, that's why you better you better be a man when you get mad. Because right. right. see, wife can lose her job. Y'all ain't saying that man. Right. Things can take a bad turn. And it's the man's responsibility, amen, to, to consult God and find a way for the men to meet. Y'all ain't with me. The pressure is really on the man. Because if the house go down, they ain't going to look at the woman. I thought I was in here with real folks. I thought I was in here. Cause what they're gonna ask her? Who your husband is? He's supposed to take care. He's supposed to find. He's supposed to do whatever he got to do. 
I know this old fashioned teaching to y'all new millennium people, but I grew up in a time where the man had to do what he had to do. And let me tell you, we grew up in a time where our daddy worked third shift, got off at seven o'clock in the morning, ran a bulldozer all day long, slept four hours in the evening, because he had to do what he had to do. Maintain soundness. Maintain wholeness. Don't fall apart on God. Don't fall apart on your family. Don't fall apart on your friendship. Don't fall apart on your church family. Remain whole. Remain sound. I'm leaving you. Don't go crazy on me. Look at this. Don't go crazy. Some of y'all are going crazy. Y'all talking crazy. You're thinking crazy. And you're doing crazy things. But you need to maintain integrity. I'm leaving you now. What is the third thing? Because we proper sermon build and say I have to have three points. So what is the third point? Job said, I'm going to wait on him. I worshiped him. I prayed to him. I praised him. And I even heard this word I preached to him. I had a worship experience with God. And then I maintained my integrity. I kept a strict compliance. Y'all ain't with me here. To an ethical standard. And I stayed sound. I stayed whole. And now that I had done that, all I can do is wait. Look at the name and say, that's all you can do. If you could change it, you would have changed it a long time ago. If you could have fisted. You would have fisted a long time ago. But uh, the fact of the matter is uh, when life takes a long turn, many times it's out of your control. Anybody here been through some pain that was out of your control? If you could, uh, you would make your blood uh, come out right. Uh, but your blood uh, is out of your control. Uh, if Trey could, uh, he would make his legs uh, walk again. Uh, but that thing uh, is out of uh, his control. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that when things uh, are out of uh, our control, it's able to get in control. Do I have a window? When life takes a bad turn, she he is able to straighten it out and go right. I hear the Bible say.